In the previous three videos, we looked at Revelation 20 verses 1 through 10, and we left off where it says in verse 10 that the false accuser that deceived them laid in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night for a period of time. That period of torment is quantified in Revelation 9 as a period of five months. So it says that after the asteroid hits, the false prophets and the false accusers will be tormented five months and then they will die. Then verse 11 says in the King James translation, And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, and from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So that sounds confusing, the way King James had it translated, but when we look at the phrase, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, we can see it can be translated differently. The word translated as from, number 575, also means of separation or a state of separation. Then this word translated as whose, number 3739, also means that or that which. So it's saying, the great white throne and him who sat on it separated from that. In other words, the throne is separated from the event in the verse before. It's separated from the lake of fire. Then the word face, number 4383, which also means the countenance, the appearance, or the outward appearance. The word earth, number 1093, also means land. The word heaven, number 3772, means sky. The word translated as fled away, number 5343, also means vanished. And the word translated as place, in number 5117, also means an inhabited place. So it's saying, the appearance of the land and sky vanished, and there was found no inhabited place. This word translated as them, number 846, also means it. And the word for is not actually in the text, so it can also say, and there was found no inhabited place in it. In other words, the great white throne and those that sit in it are separated from the lake of fire and the appearance of the land on earth and the appearance of the sky on earth vanished and there was found no inhabitable place in it. And that makes sense because in another video, we looked closely at Revelation 21, which strongly indicates that the great white throne represents the moon. If you haven't seen that video, it's linked below. So the earth is hit by an asteroid and it becomes like a lake of fire where there is no inhabitable place on it. Then verses 12 through 15 say, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So this is saying that some of the dead will be in the book of life and they will be at the throne, which is separate from the earth. Revelation 4 already told us that the throne is in heaven. So chapter 20 verses 10 through 12 are telling us that while the beast is laying in the lake of fire on the earth, the dead who are in the book of life will be delivered up to heaven to the great white throne. And specifically, it says in verse 13 that they will be delivered up by the sea and also delivered up out of hell. This word translated as hell, number 86, means grave. But another word for hell in the Bible, in Ezekiel 31, we know means pit. It also refers to the Valley of Graves, as we discussed in the last video. So, the Hell Grave, or Valley of Graves, is the pit 
which in this context refers to the crater where the asteroid hits. So this is saying that the dead will be delivered out of the pit and will be delivered out of the sea. Well, the book of Revelation tells us that the asteroid will hit the sea and will open the pit. So it makes sense that this is saying that those who are in the book of life will be delivered out of the asteroid impact. Also notice, this word translated as dead, number 3428, also means destitute. So this not only refers to a resurrection of the literal dead, but it also means a rescue of the destitute, which refers to the woman in Revelation 12 that is being persecuted but will escape at the asteroid. And that woman represents the multitude of all tribes and nations. So this is talking about the delivering up of both the destitute and the dead. And we know this word translated as cast, number 906, also means lie or lay. So verse 14 is saying that death laid in the lake of fire and hell laid in the lake of fire. In other words, the pit laid in the lake of fire and whoever was not found in the book of life laid in the lake of fire. So this is definitely a rescue of those who are in the book of life, both those who are dead and those who are still alive but destitute. And we were already told the dragon is persecuting the multitude, and for that reason they're destitute. Daniel 12 confirms this as well when it says those who are in the book will be delivered at the time of trouble, which specifically refers to the time times in half a time, which is the final three and a half years after the asteroid impact. It's when the beast continues for 42 months. So the interesting point is that we're told the beast will continue its rule for 42 months after the asteroid. Revelation 17.8 says the beast will ascend out of that bottomless pit, but then go into perdition, which means it'll be destroyed. And Revelation 13.5 says it will continue for 42 months, which is three and a half years. So it rises to power when the asteroid hits, and it continues for three and a half years but then it will lay in the pit of the asteroid and be tormented for five months. So this may explain why in the story of the ten plagues of Egypt, which we know correlate to the seven plagues of Babylon, there are only three days of darkness and not three and a half days. The reason seems to be that the beast rules during the darkness. But then it says it's tormented for the final five months before it's completely dead. And we're also told in Revelation 11 that Babylon is Egypt in the end time. So the three days of darkness in Egypt represent the three years after the asteroid impact in Babylon when it's dark in the seat of the beast. And then after those three years, a half a year of torment before they die. In Zechariah 14.12, we're told what the plague literally is. It says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So remember in Revelation 21, we're told that Jerusalem represents the bride, which is the multitude of all nations that will be rescued at the asteroid. In Zechariah 12, it's clearly talking about the day of the Lord, when all the nations go to battle in the day of the battle. So it's referring to the battle of Armageddon, partially explained in Revelation 20. And it says, in that day there shall be a very great valley. So we discussed in the last video that the valley is the pit. The word translated as hell means both the valley of graves and it also means pit. So it's the asteroid impact. The day of the Lord refers to the asteroid impact. So Zechariah is telling us that after the asteroid impact, while the battle of Armageddon is beginning, there will be a great valley, and the plague that will smite those who fought against the bride is a nuclear event. Their flesh will consume away while they stand upon their feet. Zechariah 5 explains this further when it says that more specifically, it is the flying roll that will enter the house of the thief and consume it. 
the measurements of the flying roll are very similar to the measurements of a nuclear armed missile. So he's saying in chapter 5, verse 4, that these missiles will enter their house and remain there and then consume it. So this sounds more like nuclear meltdown. The asteroid hits and causes nuclear meltdown. So in Revelation 20, where it says, the false accusers, the false prophets, and the beast will be in torment for a period of time, which Revelation 9 tells us is five months before they die. It seems to be referring to a nuclear meltdown. In the story concerning the plagues of Egypt, we're told the rivers turn to blood, Exodus 7.17 and Revelation 16.4-7. Then the frogs come out, the gnats come out, the flies come out, and all the cattle die in Exodus 8 and 9. And that would be the effects of the darkness, the blocking out of the sun. Then we're told there will be boils on their skin in Exodus 9.11 and a grievous sore in Revelation 16.2. Then thunder, hail, and fire in Exodus 9.23 and Revelation 16.17-21. Locusts in Exodus 10.14 and Revelation 9 and 16. And then three days of darkness, Exodus 10.22 and Revelation 16.10 and 11. Revelation 11 tells us the witnesses will lie dead for three and a half days. And the prophecies tell us days are years. So this is what it boils down to. The asteroid hits when the 1260 years end. The beast is not killed right away. Instead, it rises to power when the asteroid hits, and its life continues for 42 months, which is three and a half years. For the first three years, there is darkness, and Revelation 9 tells us this is because of the asteroid impact. That's when the locusts come out, and that's a deep study, but basically, the locusts in the prophecy are a code for the non-humans. Look at Revelation 9 and Joel 2. The locusts represent a strange people, basically non-humans. And it is actually the locusts who it says cause the torment in Revelation 9. They cause the torment in everyone who does not have the mark of God. And that torment lasts for five months and then they die. They lie dead in the pit after the torment for a period of time. And specifically, it's the false prophets, the false accusers, and the beast who are tormented five months and then they die. So the beast rises to power for three years, then it lies in torment for the final half a year. That's what it sounds like. And they're tormented by both a nuclear meltdown and also something that is inflicted on them by the non humans. So obviously, this will come together more clearly once it actually happens. As of now, we can only put together so much. But that's a rough outline of what it seems to be saying. And again, Revelation 20 is confirming that while this is happening on the earth, there are people who will be rescued. Some of them, the dead who will be resurrected, and some of them who will be rescued alive who are now destitute. And again, those people will not go through the torment. They do not go through the three and a half years after the asteroid. They do not go through the darkness. And they are not given the mark of the beast. Because the mark of the beast goes into effect after the asteroid impact. It's given to those who remain. So the mark of the beast, the microchip or the RFID chip, we're told in Revelation 13, will be handed out by the Pope. And this will occur after the asteroid impact because it occurs during the 42 months, which is after the asteroid impact. So it's not going to be something that people make a choice about. Some people right now are under the impression that they're going to have to make a choice to refuse the microchip. But notice the Bible doesn't say that. In Revelation 14, 9 through 11, it doesn't say that it's a choice. It says those who receive the mark will be tormented with fire and brimstone. The reason is that those who get the mark are those who are left behind. The microchip is not enforced until after the asteroid hits. Notice in Revelation 13 verse 16, it says that the lamb who speaks like a dragon, which is the Pope, will cause all to receive a mark in their right hand or foreheads. 
But in verse 17, where it talks about the buying and selling with the mark, it actually mentions three things. It says in order to buy or sell, a person will either have number one, the mark, or number two, the name, or number three, the number of the name. So that is already occurring. Many people have shown that verse 17 is already happening right now. The number is 666, and the barcode that everybody uses equals 666. So people are already buying and selling with the barcode. That's already here. There are even people buying and selling with the microchip itself. So that is here. But after the asteroid, the chip will be enforced. That is when it will go into everyone's right hand or forehead, and they will not have a choice about it. At that point, they have already been left behind. The rescue occurs at the asteroid. So in Revelation 20 verse 4, it makes clear that the souls who live with the anointed after the asteroid never received the mark of the beast. And the reason they do not receive it is because they are not on the earth when it is forced on everyone. They're taken to safety at the asteroid impact, and the chip is forced on those who are left behind after the asteroid hits. So we'll stop there for now, and we'll look at Revelation 21 next week. Thank you so much to those who make this research possible. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.